rather than someone preaching at you, we're going to have a, a Father's Day conversation. Jen's going to uh, facilitate the conversation, and um, you're going to hear from three different members of our church. Uh, I'll just say this, uh, we, were, we were really thinking about who to ask, and there were so many people that were on our list. Uh, Jen and I were talking about this a few months ago, and um, uh, you know, I just thought about, hey, there's, uh, there might be somebody out there uh, that might be in uh, Chris's story, uh, Chris Hodgkins, who uh, might be trying to redeem some of the times. If you know Chris, he's been trying to redeem some time that he had lost uh, from De- with Devin. Uh, you might be someone like a Bill Gaffney whose uh, children are no longer in the home. Uh, so how do you be a father uh, when, you, when your kids are no longer there? Uh, and then also, Pastor Chris, uh, just someone who sacrificed so much, um, uh, adopting children, and now is even seeing some of his kids, now one kid uh, being married in a month or two, and so a few months, I don't know exactly when. So, uh, But uh, we, uh, it's, it's really exciting. I just thought how you guys have sacrificed for so many, uh, maybe not, not adopting one, but also fostering two. Uh, so... Uh, this was uh, very thought out. All, obviously, we've missed a few of you, and uh, but Jen is going to facilitate the conversation. I'm going to pray and get off the stage and let her talk. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the men in our church and how they're trying to live out um, the Word of God and uh, how they're trying to bring that into their home. Now, some of us, we might be on step one or even not have never taken a step, and some of us uh, might be on step 10 and have been walking this walk for a while and and have been doing, you know, quote unquote, on, uh, all the right things, but maybe we're missing something still. And so, uh, Lord, wherever we're at in the story, Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts uh, and transform our heart, transform our mind so we can be the men that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. I'm so honored to get to spend today with you guys and with these guys. Um, I have known Pastor Chris for almost 20 years, and he has been a father to me in many ways over the last two decades, and I'm so thankful for him. Chris has been my brother for 15 years probably, um, and I've learned so much from him, and I have so many great memories with you. And Bill, I've just gotten to know in the last couple of years, um, and just the way that you and your wife uh, say yes to Jesus has been so beautiful and such an example to, to me and my family. And so... We're excited to be here. Um, This is a little different, obviously, than usual. We are having less of a sermon and more of a conversation. Um, We want to hear what Jesus is doing in these different fathers and in their different contexts and in their different families. Um, One of the core values here at Building on the Rock is that we want to be making disciples from generation to generation. Um, And we take that not just from a... uh, billboard that we saw somewhere or a catchy phrase, you know, on, a, on the side of the road. But from the Bible, we are called to be disciple makers. Um, and so that's what we want to talk about a little today. And I think that when we hear, like, be a disciple, we think, oh, yeah, of course, that's what I'm supposed to do. But when it comes to doing it, we can get, like, a little, wah, 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 wah. you know, you want to come up with excuses, you want to uh, make it harder than it is, and we say, well, what's the plan? How, do, how exactly do I do it? What's the program? You know, can I take this from this guy that is a disciple maker somewhere? And we make life a lot harder than it has to be, right? Making disciples is really easy, and we see a clear plan for it in God's Word in Deuteronomy 6. It's going to be on the screen, I think, um, but it's chapter 6, verse 4, and you can read along. It says, Hear, O Israel... The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So how do you make a disciple? By knowing Jesus and making him known, by loving God with all you have, and turning around and and passing that to the people around you. And so if you're a father, you get it easy. 
Uber, <laughs> you're like, uh, maybe not. I don't feel easy to me. But you get it easy in that you have built-in disciples right in your home. God has given you children that you are able to start there and say, man, I am going to disciple starting here. May God call you around the world to be a missionary overseas and you're making disciples in, in Germany one day. Yeah, praise God, that might happen. But it starts in your home with your wife and your kids. And so we're going to hear from them today um, just a little bit about what God is doing in their stories. Um, and, and we're hoping that you would be encouraged by that. And so these men are disciple makers, and I'm excited to hear from them. So that being said, I did remind them, we all have water here. I reminded them that if we spill it onto the mics, we'll get electrocuted. Um, so today will be life-changing, hopefully one way or the other. Pastor Chris, it'll be electrifying. Pastor Chris, can you tell us um, just how you came to know Jesus and why you're here today? Okay, so that's really easy. Um, I walked into these doors 18 years ago, and the uh, men of this church um, bothered me. They loved me. Uh, they opened their home to me. Uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, teach me the Bible. Uh, Pastor Joe, who, who was Joey at the time, um, invited me to be part of his skit team. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tried to break my leg. Um, <laughs> But just the men pouring into me and showing me what a father is, even you know those that weren't fathers themselves at that time, just loving me, showing me what God's love was, and um, really teaching me how to be a father to the two children at the time I had. Yeah. Thank you so much. I remember um, I lived at Pastor Bob's at the time, and I remember Pastor Chris he would come at 6 a.m. just alone and read the Bible with Pastor Bob in the morning, and I would sit on the steps, and they would sit in the living room, uh, the dining room there on the side. And I remember one morning, it might have been your first morning, it was one of the very first, and I was like, man, like, this guy's nuts. And to look at you now and be like, to na and I, then I thought he was nuts, now I know he's nuts. But to watch how God has transformed your life has been beautiful. And I just do want to acknowledge, um, I know that, listen, Father's Day can be joyous, and it can also be really hard for different reasons. Um, Pastor Chris did lose his father uh, this week, and, and that's really sad. Um, and so I do want to just hold space that, that this is a difficult day for you, and I appreciate you really doing this and sharing. So, Bill, I'd love to hear um, from you. What brought you here? How did you meet Jesus? Okay, well, it's a really long story, so if anybody knows the Reader's Digest version, if you're old enough to remember <laughs> that, I mean, I'm going to give you the condensed version. Yeah. It's the TikTok uh, version now. We need the TikTok I, version. Yeah. Well, I, exactly. I grew up in a, in a Catholic household. Uh, they were one hour a week. That was about it. They made, they made every week, but that was about it. I uh, fell away for a lot of years. Um, I was with friends and family when I was in my 40s. We were talking about politics where the nation was going. And I got to the point where I got so upset and so frustrated, my brother-in-law said, you know what, I don't care anymore. I just want the truth. And the very next day, I opened the Bible for the very first time. And it opened my eyes. And I've been on a journey ever since. Yeah, amen. It's unbelievable. Amen. And tell us a little bit about your family. I'm not, I don't think I've met your, your kids. Okay. Well, I have two girls, uh, Abby and Sarah. She's here today. Oh, hi, Abby. My Stand up. <laughs> my youngest is in Virginia Beach. Okay. So she couldn't make it up tonight. Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks she'll show up. Awesome. Um, but, yeah, we've, uh, we've been on this journey for a while. Not sure. Long, but it, I didn't get saved right away. It took a while. Yeah. But I was on this journey, and I, I ran into a, quite a few people that have mentored me Amen. while I was still working. Yeah. Uh, one gentleman in particular, but uh, I won't let him slip under the bus. But basically, <laughs> you know, he really enlightened me and taught yeah. me a lot. And then we uh, came across this church, um, Ken, Kenny yeah. Armstrong, is it? Kenny? Kenny? Martin. Kenny Martin. Oh, okay. I uh, invited him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've never looked back. Amen. Uh, Amen. So. Awesome. Thank you. And Chris, tell us just the, sh yeah, TikTok version of yours, man. <laughs> Yeah. I got a long story. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to leave a bunch of it out, but I came to know Jesus back in 2009. My life was an absolute train wreck. Um, I was homeless. I was on drugs. Michelle was pregnant with Devin, and um, I was in desperate need of a Savior. A good friend of mine used to go to church here. His name is Stephen. He invited me to Building on Rock. That's where I came from. I eventually joined the men's house that's now out here at Building on Rock. And I joined the men's house, and that's when God was able to really start doing some really good stuff in my life. Restore. He was restoring me, my character, who I was as a man, my relationship with my son. Um, me and Michelle got married during that time. Um, so really cool stuff was happening, but you know that devil he just he doesn't let stop. Up. And he started, yeah, he started to sneak in, and I started to kind of back away. I started to pull away from the church. I wasn't hanging out with the guys that I was with in the beginning. I started making little compromises. Um, I just wasn't doing the things that I did when I first came to the church. Yeah. So I started to back away. And, uh, and I eventually found myself back on drugs. And that was the beginning of a five-year run. Um, Michelle left me for five years. Um, Devin didn't have a dad for five years. Um, I was running from the Lord for five years. It was a, it was a long run. It was a mess. Uh, I even ran to Arizona. Yeah. And I had another child. For me, a lot of you might not know this. I have another child in Arizona. Ran sure. out to Arizona, had another kid. I hit rock bottom. Yeah, how back. did you get back? I'm, I'm leaving so many details out. My mom <laughs> is here. It's crazy story. Hi, about mom. My mom. I hit rock bottom. I came back to, to Jersey and, and, and got back right with the Lord and recommitted yeah. my life to the Lord. And, uh, and me and Michelle committed our lives. We committed to one another. And me and Michelle, we both committed to put God at the head of our marriage. Yeah. And, uh, and we've never done that before. And these last four years have been the greatest four years of my life. Yeah. So, have they been really, yeah. Yeah, they've been, uh, yeah, they've been great. Have they been really easy? No. No. It's no, not there's, easy, there's right? There's actually nothing easy there's about it. There's nothing easy about it. <laughs> no. It's very difficult. Yeah. Like you just, but it's good, man, yeah, right? It's good. Yeah. yeah. You just stay. You put your head down. And you yeah. Just yeah, and yeah, now we have Zoe, Zoe right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, praise God. Yeah, it's a cool story. That's cool. And you know what I appreciate so much about your story is like that when you came back, it wasn't this like massive overhaul. Although now, four years later, it looks like a massive overhaul. Yeah. But it was day by day saying, yes, yes, I'll move into the Saratellis. Yes, I'll, I'll re reignite a, a relationship with Michelle. Yes, I'll come to church, you know, and just taking it really slow and one step at a time has been beautiful to watch. So it is Father's Day, and I know that fathers really impact us in lots of ways, honestly, both good and bad. I'd love to hear, like, something that you learned maybe from your own dad or maybe just from a father figure in your life um, that has stuck with you and kind of shaped who you are. I'd love to hear from you, Bill. So real quick, I have to say I love my dad. He was a good dad. He taught me some, some really good things. But the one funniest thing is that he was probably the most unhandy man that ever walked <laughs> the face of the earth. And he scared the living daylights out of me because I would never touch anything because I was afraid I was going to break it. And he really was blessed because he lived in a neighborhood that had two men that lived across from him that bailed him out of everything he ever got into. I mean, he was truly blessed. Oh. But it scarred me. <laughs> but anyway, um, he always used to say, and I remember this when I was little, say what you mean and mean what you think. Mm. Yeah. So it's integrity and it's honesty and um, just being, well, that, the integrity part, honesty, but um, That's okay. Um, what, how do you think that, I mean, that's a huge one, right? Integrity. Yeah. Like, if you have integrity, that, that uh, I was just talking to someone this week how character, like, this woman was like, man, I, I want someone to speak more into my char kid's character than grades, achievements, right. awards. Like, when someone says something about your character, that matters. And I think it's the same thing with integrity. Like, yeah. man, I'd much rather people say, your kids have integrity than, oh, wow, they knew all the answers or whatever, you know? Yeah. What do you think that, that what he taught you, how do you use that then raising your own kids, especially Abby, but also your daughter that, that is distant? Like, you know, it's not the same as when you're right next door. 
how do you continue to, to make disciples of your children in this phase of life? I think it's one of the major things is just being consistent. And I know my, yeah. my folks always told me, uh, always growing up, you know, a promise is a promise. Yeah. You mean what you say. Don't make a promise. You're not going to, and that's good or bad. Yeah. You know, so you can't promise something and not come true. Right. That's the key. Yeah. So uh, that was, that was, that was really big. Yeah. And the other one is like how to treat people. Right. Um, always treat people with respect. No yeah. No where you come from, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, what you do. Um, and I always did that from an early age. Yeah. Even the way before I was ever saved. Right. It was like it didn't matter whether you were a CEO or a dishwasher or whatever you were. I yeah. Was yeah. That's what I was trying to do. I think that's, that's yeah. Life. Wow. It really comes back to, yeah, mean what you yeah. say and, and say what you mean. That's really cool. Christopher, how about you? Chris oh, uh, Tufa. Yeah, Chris Tufa. Uh, that's honestly that's what happens when I get nervous. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Chris. I, this is what I look like nervous. I. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was when I was young. You yeah. know, when I was 10, 11 years old, my parents divorced. My dad was really banged up. Now my mom's over him. I'm sure she's got some stories about him, but. I was looking to the world to show me what a man is. I didn't have a father figure in my life. I didn't have somebody to tell me right from wrong. I wanted to go to school. I wanted to have my dog. I wanted to hang out. I wanted to go out with. Um, I miss my mom a lot. And I, uh, <laughs> you can ask her about it later. But um, but I had this job. I had this job, and uh, and I got this job on the farm when I was like 12 years old. And, uh, and, and the farmer knew that I was a troubled teen, and the farmer knew that I um, probably came from a broken home. And he invested in me, and he poured into me, and uh, he taught me how to be complete. And he taught me the value of work ethic and to work hard and to do a good job, to be thorough. And um, these were skills that he was teaching me when he was in the field. Yeah. Skills that I still identify with today. I want to share these skills with my with my children that they would work hard and and do a good job and be thorough and um, it's important to keep a job. You need to be a good worker. So um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's it. I think that's great. Like and and again, it speaks to some of what we're talking about today. Like that, this man really, when you how old? Twelve. When you're 12 years old, that he can see something in you that you can't. I wasn't the best employee. I'm sure. I was probably Yeah. I, I, listen, I, can st I would see you and fire you day one. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, that he could see something that you couldn't see and that he was investing in a future that he doesn't know where you're at now. He doesn't know that God changed your life. You should call him after this and say thank you. I yeah. Thought about it he has such an impact. <laughs> yeah. On who I am today. Yeah. Work ethic, and I like go back to that. Like, yeah. Thank God for that guy that showed me how to be a good worker. Right. You know. And I think like it's yeah. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Amen. I think it's so much more than work ethic too. Like, again, is is marriage easy? Is is fatherhood easy? No. You had to learn to work hard. You had to learn to not give up. You had to learn to to put your pants on again tomorrow and do the job that you have to do and change the diaper even when you don't want to right and you learned that from him and you didn't even know it you were probably shoveling whatever yeah. <laughs> I was trying to look for the word hay but I didn't have it you were probably shoveling hay and yeah and, and he was teaching you to be a father then when you were 12 years old and man what doesn't God God waste nothing amen pastor Chris tell us a little bit um about your your situation so I, I shared yesterday but um father ever taught me was the value of family and um, just how much he loved us. He never, um, I would say like, he didn't always get it right, but he still hung in there and tried. Yeah. And um, one of the things I always took away is that he, we always say he was never raising a kid. Because mm. um, if you're trying to go into it to raise a kid, then the end result is you're bringing up a child. Yeah, but you're going to have a bunch of kids. A bunch of kids. Yeah. But he always said, I'm raising young men and women. Yeah. To be prepared for the rest of the world. And 
something I so believe going into raising my own children is that I don't plan on raising children. I'm raising young men and women. I'm raising somebody else's husband. I'm raising somebody else's wife in my job. It's important. Yeah. The other thing I would like to say is, is something I learned here from my pastor, trying to figure this out and learn it. He would always just say, five minutes a day, five minutes a day. Get into the word five minutes a day and start there. Um, and it just reminds me, like, wherever I'm struggling, um, when I don't feel like opening it, when I don't feel like getting out of bed, it's just give it five minutes and we'll see what God's doing. Yeah. Amen. I, again, like, I always go back to that picture where I was sitting on the stairs. You probably didn't even know I was there. But I was like, man, five minutes a day. And to look at you now, like, Reverend Chris Tonra, what God did with five minutes a day. Now, is it five minutes a day now? Not usually, right? But, but man, to start somewhere and to build precept upon precept is a, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. What do you think? I also love what you said about your dad. And, like, right, like, if you're raising chickens, you don't say, oh, I'm raising chicks. You say, I'm raising chickens. If I'm raising ducks, like, I'm not raising ducklings. What? do have chicks. Right, and you don't say I'm raising chicks. Right, you're raising chickens. Now, may they be chicks? Yeah, but you're raising. You want this end goal, and I think that's really beautiful, and again, comes back to making a disciple. Like, on day one, we none of us look like disciples, you know, but to see, and honestly, on day 31, on day 21, like, you never really, like, whatever, but but to see that progression and to say, man, yeah, we're going towards this goal, and I think that's really beautiful. Can you tell us more about what it's like that, that precept upon precept, and, and the idea of, you know, kind of leading with the, with the end in mind. Um, tell us what it's like in your context with six kids in your house, four are biologically not yours, you know, you, could, you had two kids, the American dream, you could have said we're done, and instead you said, you know what, let's add one more. And you said, well, that's not good enough, let's add three more to that. What does that mean? Like, yeah, what does it look like to disciple in that way, precept upon precept? Oh, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Chris. <laughs> um, it's, it's a lot of repenting yeah. as a father. Um, I don't get it right. Um, it is understanding where um, these young men came from and loving them. We learned early on especially dealing with the foster care system, they m- want to make it very clinical. You know, it's, you never know how long the kid is going to be with you in their care. And God spoke to us early on saying, if they're here for a minute, a day, a year, or forever, we will treat them as yeah. your own. And, um, That's good. <laughs> we, we believe that. Yeah. And, and we treat them as if they were us, which they are. Yeah. Amen. I yeah. I have seen that in your life, both of your lives. What do you want to say, Laura? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I am an equal opportunity mean person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too good. But I do. I notice that in in both of your lives, in the way that you have always treated them, like, hey, they're you're you're part of the family, and there's no no special privilege because of where what hospital you were born in. So, um. So what is a lesson, like, you're all fathers. What is a lesson that you would say, man, if I, if I only could give my kids one more thing, like, what is a lesson or a Bible verse or something that you would say, man, this is what I want to get, want my kids to, to really take a hold of? Uh, Chris, I'd love to start with you. Um, so I've had, I do have a Bible verse. It's been my, my life verse for a while. It's, if it was a scripture that I've, that I've leaned on, it's a scripture that I've found scripture that I've that I've gotten hope from. I'm gonna read. Uh, it's Joel two twenty five. This is the Lord speaking. Joel two twenty five. He says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter. And this this is God speaking and this is this is the scripture God is talking about redeeming what was lost, re- yeah. redeeming what the locust has has eaten. Um, this sin, 
I fall so much, I fall so much in sin and into hopelessness and despair. But the, but the promise is that God's going to restore the time. Okay? And, and, and he has restored the time. He's faithful. I see it every day in my life. God's mm. restoring the time. With my son, he's restoring the time. In my marriage, he's restored the time. He's restored it. He's restored the time. With my, my, my mother is here. Yeah, and, amen. And she's lucky to be yeah. alive. God is restoring, is restoring the time. Yeah. And, and in my prayer would be for my, my kids that, that they would, that I could be a stop sign. Yeah. Please do not go this way. Don't go down this road. Go this way. Yeah. You know, I hope the kids in this church are like, I'm never going down that road. Mr. Chris went down. His car blew up, turned into a dumpster fire down that road. <laughs> His car went down that road and fell into a big, giant, Man, never saw his car again. Don't go down that road. <laughs> yeah, right? that, that's the prayer that that the kids would learn from our mistakes and you know and, and grow up to be you know yeah active members of the church and good parents. And yeah, love the Lord, love him. And, um, learn from our mistakes. Yeah, I think amen, amen man. It, it is. It's you are no short of a miracle. Your family is no short of a miracle. And, and I am blessed to get front row seats to, to your life and both of you guys. And um, w- one of the things that I think about what you're, what you're saying there in Joel is like, A, I'm, I remember like, yeah, it's not just like that he's going to stop the locust, that the locust already, oh, I almost ripped your Bible, Brianna. It's not, uh, it's not that, that, oh, well, they've already eaten away this, so that part's gone. No, he's, he restores it. He makes it whole, you know. And, and whatever that looks like, and for your kids or for the kids in this church, like, yeah, the hope is that they, that they see you as a stop sign and that they say, I'm not going to do that. But they have their own stories, right? And they have their own journey. And when you mess up, and you will, my prayer is that you would hear that verse and remember him again and say, God was faithful to Chris and he can be faithful to me. God forgave Chris and he can forgive me. God redeemed Chris, and he can redeem me. And I hope that that is the prayer, like, that, that for our young people and for, for each one of us. So, amen. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Pastor Chris, what is something that you would want to pass on, both to your own kids and? The entire Bible, actually. Um, <laughs> no, you got to pick one. <laughs> Just one. You know, I, know, I always go back to Joshua twenty four fifteen, where it says, um, if the Lord... Choosing to serve the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself who you are going to serve, whether the gods of the Amorites who rule the land that you're in now, or that where you came from from your fathers. And let them know it, it, every day you got to wake up, it's a choice. Yeah. Like, you have to choose to serve the Lord. Um, sometimes it's going to be hard, sometimes you're not going to want to, but you have to make that choice every day of your life to serve the Lord. And then the final verse in, or line in that verse is, for as in me and my house, you will serve the Lord. Yeah. And that comes from the declaration of the Father, knowing, like, like I am going to raise my family to m- want to make that choice, not mm-hmm. just out of obligation or me telling them as a force that you're serving the Lord, that you're going to watch me, how I love serving God and loving serving my family. Yeah. And, you're, it's, it's and an you easy, can't help but. Yeah, it's an yeah. easy choice. Yeah. To do that. It's not something that I'm going to be like, you got to do it. Right. Because dad says so. Right. That's such a good point because I do think, like, I read the verse that way and I think, like, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, I got really nervous about the water just then. Um, oh, I know. But, but, yeah, to say, man, no, by the way I live my life, you can't help it. You can't help but buy in. You can't help but want to follow Jesus because you've seen how he's changed my life and he can change yours. Like, man, what a beautiful, beautiful way to to disciple your family and and your community. Bill? Well, when uh, Pastor Chris uh, asked me about this, I said, yeah, then maybe it's it's just for you. And I I have a few uh, for the Green Hope Church. uh, Just hold that mic up closer to your face. Faith, hope, and love. So I was reading through, and this really jumped out at me. So I'd like to read this. Ephesians 1, in the Amplified Version, and this is from Henry Munger, the French author. This is Paul. And I pray that the eyes of your heart and the very center of your core of your being 
may be enlightened and flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glory, glorious inheritance in the saints, so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his spiritual power is in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, which he is producing Christ who raises from the dead. Yeah. Amen. And I think, man, that is the prayer for everyone, right? That your eyes, that the eyes of your heart would be open, right? That the eyes of your heart would be open. Yeah, man. Because I think so often, especially in conversations like this, we think, I am raising kids, I am making disciples, I am whatever. And really it's like, no, Jesus does all the work. Jesus does all the work. We don't do any of the work. I'm not out there saving people. I'm not out there converting people, right? I'm, even my little disciples, like, it is only by the grace of God. And so, yeah, what is my prayer? That the eyes of their heart would be opened, like yours, to the truth. That one day they would say, what is true? Because there's only one answer, you know? And it, it, if you lean into that question, you are going to find your way to Jesus. And it is such a beautiful thing. Um, I want to thank you guys so much just for sharing a little bit of your story. I, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Um, of course, if you want to. Thanks. If you guys want to ask them more questions or you want any more about their story, like, yeah, we, it, we can't do it justice in, in 25 minutes, in 30 minutes. Like, the, these men have lived some difficult lives and walked some hard roads. And I was reminded... Pastor Chris, this morning, thinking about you, um, of that verse that says, uh, you know, narrow is the way and few find it. And man, you have, you all three have walked a narrow road. You have walked a narrow road by God's grace. And you have helped others to find that road. And it is, I am so honored to even be on this, this altar with you guys. And so um, for us, I hope that you were, I hope that you were encouraged and inspired. The reality is, you all have a story, and we, I, I would love to hear each one of your stories. We'd love to interview you all, but we just don't have time for it today. Um, but these guys are simply a representation of you, right? They represent the church. And the reality is their stories are different, and their details are different, and their timelines are different. But the theme is the same. The theme is, the constant theme is that these are men that have continued to say yes to Jesus. Even when it's hard, even when they don't feel like it, even when things tell them not to, even when the world says, you can do it better this way, you can do it better over here, oh, whatever, like, I promise you wealth, come my way. I promise you ease, come my way. I promise you uh, more money in your bank account, like, because you have none. <laughs> come my way. And, and over and over you said, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm going to follow, like you said, I'm going to, my family will serve the Lord because I do, and I'm going to make the sacrifices for it. And it, it is beautiful to watch, and it's, it's inspiring, I hope, for you guys as well. And so when you walk out of this church, the hope is that you would also say, man, how do I make a disciple? And, and you can ask yourself too, like, well, am I exempt from this, right? I don't, I don't have children. Does that mean I don't have to do this? No. Uh, well, I had a bad relationship with my dad. Does that mean I don't have to do this? No. Well, I haven't been a great dad myself. Do, does that mean I don't have to do this? No. No one, no one is exempt from the Great Commission. No one is exempt from the call to make disciples. And so the hope is that as you walk out this door, that you would turn and say, I don't know how to do this. Okay, I'm supposed to make disciples. How do I do this? Number one, you stay connected to a church. Because you cannot do this alone. And number two, that you would open your Bible, and sorry, Brianna, in Deuteronomy 6, that you would remember the words of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Live your life for Jesus, and people will follow.